Brain Food, Random Stimulation for the Brain. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy and cheap it is to make your own homemade colored smoke bombs, any shape, any design. But the real secret to making these cool is to add a pull ring start system, just like I did in my Pokemon board build last time. And I've perfected what I think is the most reliable and easy to build pull ring ignition system you're ever going to build. But you can also use the exact same pull start system for trip wire alarms or remote detonators. The only thing we're going to need for the pull start ignition are some extra long strike on box safety matches like these and an elastic band. If we compare these to regular matches you can see that they're not just longer but they're thicker so they don't break so easily and it's this extra thickness that we're going to exploit. Grab the two matches and cut them off about one and a half to one and three quarter inches from the match head. Now if you push the two matches together and there's a nice gap between the two heads like this you're good to go but if there's not we can make one quite easily. If you haven't got a decent gap take a craft knife or some sandpaper and we're just going to shave off a very small slither of wood from around half an inch from the middle of the match towards the head. Don't worry about why, that will become very clear in a moment, but if you're using a knife, always cut away from your fingers. After we've done that, when we place them together, we've created a slight gap in the middle where the two match heads touch. Perfect. Next, we're going to cut the striker free from the box, and this is going to make up the other half of the ignition system. And even with only one small striker on a box like this, it will give you three to four reusable igniters. Grab one of the striker strips and fold it in half so the phosphor sides face outwards. Using a pin or a sharp point, make a hole a short way down from the edge of the fold. This allows you to poke a thread or hear some thin electrical wire through so we can attach whatever we like to it later on. Now if we slip the striker between the two faces of the match like this, it's all starting to come together. All we need to do now is wrap an elastic band around the bottom half of the matches nice and tightly. And if you go around multiple times, not only does it supply pinch pressure on the striker, but it holds both matches firmly in place. The beauty of this is that you have such a simple narrow ignition system with double redundancy built in. If for some reason one match doesn't strike, the other will. And because the striker is pulled clear, you can use it multiple times as long as you don't throw it away. Attaching the fuse is simple. These can be homemade or visco fuse bought from the internet like me. Just place them in while you're bonding the matches together at the start and you're good to go. You can even add a dot of hot glue to the head of the fuse to hold it in place if you want to. Or if binding the fuse into the elastic band is too tricky, just glue it onto the match last of all. If you need a fuse alternative or an upgrade, try using some indoor sparklers and use those, but be careful they burn very hot. These are coloured smoke pellets bought from the internet and they cost me between a dollar and two dollars each, which makes them the cheapest and simplest way to make a coloured smoke bomb. To insert the fuse, I'm going to drill right through the centre of the pellet, but if you haven't got a drill, just glue the fuse to the outside instead. With that done, I'm going to poke the fuse down through the hole and wrap it around underneath. Now grab some kitchen foil, cut it into a square and fold it double. Wrapping this around the pellet now holds everything in place and shields whatever you place it in from the heat when it goes off. With that done you can clamp everything in place with some tape or another elastic band ready for loading. A little bit of glue on the base now means you can load the smoke bomb into any sort of container like this vending machine ball. And there's still plenty of scope for extra pellets to increase your smoke gains if you feel the need. It's not hard at this point to figure out how to place these smoke bombs into all sorts of plastic balls and cardboard tubes. For tripwires you can use the exact same method for the pull start igniter, but to increase reliability further, if you make a small cut just here, it allows you to fold the striker into an X shape. A little bit of hot glue holds everything tightly in place when cool. That final hack stops the striker accidentally sliding out sideways, even though the standard system I tested proved to be very reliable indeed. Now if you want to recycle your containers and not risk melting them, as I did with my Pokemon build, that's easy too. Take any old cardboard tube, snip it in the middle, another dob of glue will secure it from falling out. So roll it up nice and tight and secure it with a piece of strong tape. You can now place this smoke bomb inside any sort of housing you like. 
You can even wrap extra foil around it for added heat protection. Lastly, the Pokemon button slides down until it finds a kink in the wire acting as a stop. As a final touch, a miniature ring pull is formed from the wire to hold everything in place. Well, there you go. That's how to make cheap coloured smoke bombs connected to reliable pull start igniters and simple trip wires. Please like, share and subscribe for more videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Thank you.